Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. This is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. In part by the Arlington Tomorrow Foundation, contributing to a thriving Arlington. And in part by the Texas Association of Realtors Housing Opportunity Foundation. Funding is also provided by generous donations from listeners like you. I am Salvador Villalobos. You are listening to The Reba Show, Home Ownership. Hear it from the experts in the blue stream of the Fishbowl Radio Network. Co-hosting with me is Leticia Gallegos. Today's special guest is Laura Hanna. And today we'll be speaking about public transportation in Tarrant County. Laura Hanna is the Director of Communications for Trinity Metro, where she manages internal and external communications, media relation, social media, public relations, and the website. During the Trail Rail project, Laura oversaw project, uh, oversaw community outreach uh, pertaining to the commuter rail line, as well as photography documenting the progress and launch of the 27 mile route from Fort Worth to Dallas to DFW uh, Airport. Laura has extensive experience in both internal and external communication. She has been a, sorry, <laughs> she's been, she began her career in newspaper reporting and transitioning into book publishing and then communication positions in higher education institutions with T 
Texas Health Resources. Laura. Welcome what, to the show, Laura. The show. Thank you. Happy to be here. So the Trinity Metro, what is it and what does it mean to um, Dallas-Fort Worth area? Trinity Metro is the public transportation system for Tarrant County, and we have an extensive network of services. Um, a lot of people know us for the buses that go around town. We have more than 2,000 bus stops, believe it or not, and we've got 46 fixed bus routes that travel in and out of Tarrant County. A lot of people know us for the rail services that we offer. Um, but first, I'll tell you a little bit more about the bus operations. We have more than 250 passenger shelters at our stops. We have Molly the Trolley, the circulator that you see downtown, also the lunch line that runs between Burnett Plaza and Sundance Square. We have bus service in Forest Hill, bus stop in River Oaks, and of course we also have the access paratransit services and van pools. So that covers most of our wheels services, and then on the rail, a lot of people know us because of TexRail. That's our new commuter rail line that goes between Fort Worth and the airport. It's a quick 48 minutes from downtown to the airport, straight into Terminal B. We've got a, it goes right into the station, and so you just walk inside and you're at the airport. You don't have to worry about driving on the freeway, worrying about getting stuck in traffic, worrying about paying for parking while you're there. So that has been Recently, very Laura, we heard uh, when you launched it, when, when was it that you launched it? About January 10th. January 10th. And your ridership has grown quite a bit since you launched it, right? It definitely has. We've been very pleased. We've had 200,000 riders at this point. Wow. Yes. That's since impressive. January 10th. Right. And we track it by location, and the airport has been the largest boarding and, and people getting on and off at the airport. Are, these, uh, are you tracking as far as tourists or um, um, residents that live in the area? Right now it's just numbers, but we are mm -hmm. getting a lot of feedback from different partners in the area who are having visitors use it. We think it'll be very popular with people who are hosting conventions because that's what those from out of state and from other countries look at is when they get there, is there public transportation? Because if you have a group of 200 coming from Italy, you don't want to have to pay for you know 200 rental cars. You want to be able to have a way for them to get to the airport, to their destination. We've also noticed people who are able to use their time if they have a long layover at the airport to take the eight-minute ride to Grapevine, hang out there, have a meal, do some shopping, and head back. And that's a lot more entertaining than hanging out in an airport <laughs> for eight hours, even though DFW Airport is a great place to be. And for probably a sure. lot less than a cop, cup of coffee. Yes, <laughs> very much so. And yes, and we'll get into pricing in there in a minute. So uh, tell us about, so you're telling us about the network. Yes. So uh, we talked a little about TexRail, and I should also mention that we jointly own and operate the Trinity Railway Express with DART. That's the service that runs between Fort Worth and Dallas. And then connected with that, we recently started the TRE Link, which is the shuttle service that goes from Centerport Station to the airport. What is it linked to? It connects with the TRE. At the Centerport Station, you get off the train and get on a bus, and that takes you to the airport, to the remote area, and then you take in the airport bus that takes you into the terminal that you need to go to. Okay. There's a lot of acronyms that are, you know, tossed around when we know what we're talking about. So for our listeners that don't know, uh, what does TRE stand for? And kind of Sure, it's more the Trinity Railway Express. And okay. so that is a popular route for people going to the American Airlines Center, also known as the AAC for our acronyms, uh -huh. um, especially right now going to Dallas Stars games, uh, Dallas Mavericks, special events and concerts there. Okay. If you're like, I'm like a lot of people, I don't really like to drive when I'm going in to those areas. Because parking is a, Yeah, the hassle of parking, the, the expensive parking. parking so well, that drops night. you right off at Victory Station. You just walk in. Especially last night while the Stars yeah. were playing <laughs> Definitely. St. Louis, right? Definitely. Right. <laughs> okay. So tell us more about, about it. Sure. I'll tell you a little more about TexRail. As I said, that's been a, a great option for conventioners and tourists. We've heard from a lot of people from North Richland Hills that they come into Fort Worth, just you know, hang out, go to dinner, go home. Uh, we recently had a booth at the Main Street Arts Festival. We had kind of an experiential marketing where we had all these banners set up and we would talk to the people as they came off the bus or the train and were on their way into the festival. And the mayor of North Richland Hills stopped by and was very happy. He said, my train was packed. 
And so you had all these people coming in from yeah. North Richland Hills for the day just to go to the festival in Fort Worth. How long of a di- uh, r- uh, timeline, time-wise, how long is it from Richland Hills to... Into to, downtown? Into downtown. It's about 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and from what I've heard, business is booming in Grapevine as well. I know I've done that myself. We're right over on the train, have a meal, come back, and it's it's just so nice. It's relaxing and gives you a different perspective than being behind the wheel. What is the average, uh, or what's the... When, what time does it open? Is it 24 hours? Is there, What's the hours of operation? Just about. Just uh, about. It's perfect for early morning flights or if you work an early shift at the airport. Our first train leaves the Fort Worth, Texas and Pacific Station, which is on Lancaster, at 325 in the morning. And then the last train finishes after 1 o'clock in the morning. Wow. So what is the time from point A to point B? The full distance is 52 minutes. If you're leaving from downtown, it's 48 minutes to the airport. Wow, that's great. And that's even during rush hour and... Right. Fantastic. There's no change. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have more trains at certain times of the day or... Um... Well, right now it's hourly service, but okay. we're planning to change that soon. In July, we will have... Um, We'll be able to add trains into service, and so we will move to 30-minute frequency during peak hours on weekdays. So that's another 8 to 10 hours a day where you'll have additional service. That's so great. right now we run 44 trains a day, and when that happens, it'll be 72 trips. That's great. Okay. Great. So tell us more. <laughs> well, we found that it's been very, very popular. Uh, one of the fun facts about Texrail is that it's a Swiss designed train and so when we were going through the design process we thought well ski racks in Texas is probably not the best plan (laughs) so we substituted those out and we have vertical bike racks so we find a lot of people like to ride the trails get on the train and then you can just hang them up and it's very it's a great way to get them out of the way and they just lock in it's a very simple operation is there an additional cost to ride your bike on the trail no no No, we encourage it and i know some different people who commute to work that way where they ride to the train station get off and then ride to work oh that's great but it's been a a very popular service so far so much so that we're already looking at expanding and so we're in preliminary discussions to provide service to the fort worth medical district and actually when the service was planned it was a longer stretch than downtown to the airport Mm -hmm. and we did it in segments and so the segments that we have already completed would be two through four but then there's segment one which we decided to postpone because the focus was on getting fort worth to the airport set up so in segment one there are four additional stations in fort worth so it goes all the way down to summer creek and i-20 near granbury and near the tcu berry street area and then the medical district. So what we're looking at is expanding and doing those stations, but it would be in four phases. So right now our focus is primarily on getting to the medical district. There are more than 60,000 employees in that area, and the hospitals have all been very supportive and very eager to help out any way they can. So I think that'll be great. I'm thinking of nurses and doctors who work long shifts, and probably the last thing you want to do is get behind the wheel and drive because you're so tired. Absolutely. Positive impact for their employees. Now, you're saying in phases, four phases, how long are these phases? What do you anticipate phase one through phase four to be? It's really in the talking stages at this point, but <coughs> the medical district would be the one that we take care of first, and then we would look at TCU mm-hmm. and, and move on down the line, but we don't have a timeline for that yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are there any new initiatives that um, are happening yeah, we've got quite a few different things going on. Uh, we're working on our first electric bus that's going to be known as the Dash, and that's going to feed into the 7th Street corridor. And so that will be going along all the bars and restaurants in that area. It'll go through the Cultural District and connect with the new Dickies Arena. So for mm-hmm. all those people who are lucky enough to get George Strait tickets for <laughs> next year, <laughs> they can take the Dash to get there. Oh, great. So great. that service will be starting September 22nd. And it's a, a battery electric bus that will hold a charge for all day, but we also plan to have battery stations like for a quick charge while we're out and about. And, of course, there are no emissions because of the type of bus it is. And this is a uh, public-private partnership where different people are 
helping to pay for the service because that's how much they would like to have it. Oh, great. How many uh, passengers does the Dash mm -hmm. hold? That I don't know because okay. it's configured a little bit differently than okay. our buses. All right. But 30, 40, I'm not okay. positive. Good. So that would be your first one out of hopefully many. Yes. So that's good. That'll start September 22nd, but the paint scheme on them is a bright red, so they're going to be very noticeable, and we're supposed to get those in in May. So probably in June we'll start testing them along the route. Okay. So they won't be in service yet, but people will be seeing bright red buses around downtown. Fantastic. Wow. Any other initiatives besides that? Yeah, as I mentioned, we're doing the, the TRE link that we mm -hmm. had taken over that service. Um, we're doing that in partnership with um, the airport and with Dallas Area Rapid Transit. We also have um, the zip zone that I mentioned in the Alliance area. That's a partnership with Denton County Ter Transportation Authority. And then we're also looking at another zip zone this summer, which will be in the Mercantile Center Station area. So that will connect with businesses there and will also help people get to the last mile of their trip. Okay. Now, there's linking and transferring. Is it one fare or is there uh, different fares for each link? And generally, the best way to go is to either have a day pass or a monthly pass or an annual pass. If you're doing something like the TRE link and you have a ticket on the Trinity Railway Express, then that also covers your trip on the TRE link. If you are doing a combination of rail and bus, then you should definitely get a day pass or a month pass because it's 250 one way for the train, and then it would be another dollar per ride on the bus. And if you buy a day pass, it's only five dollars. So, oh great, yeah. So where would you buy, buy these day passes? You can use buy them on the Go Pass app, or you can buy them at our stations. Okay. Or you can. Um, also purchase them online if you're ordering ones that are more like weekly or monthly passes. All right. So if you're you're out and about and you want you want to experience the the links, you can actually you said you can go on your phone on a yes. on a phone app. What's that phone app again? It's called the Go Pass. The Go Pass. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And then there's another app for our buses. It's called the Next Bus app, and that's great because it provides real time information. If you come up to a bus stop and you're not sure what the schedule is, you can download the app look up which route you're waiting on and it will tell you and it not only tells you the next one it shows you the one after that okay so if you are you know you still have three blocks to go and it's coming in one minute you're probably not going to make it but it'll show you the next one's coming in 15 minutes okay. after that great now your website has a, a very nice interactive where you start your you you can put in where you're starting from mm -hmm. and your destination um, which is really good now does the app do that as well I really the the trip planner option is the best for planning your trip. Mm -hmm. uh, the next bus does show you all the stops along the way. Like, for instance, Route 2 that goes on Camp Bowie to Ridgemore Mall. Uh, you look at that, and there are lots and lots of stops along the way. And if you're used to going down that road, you may not realize exactly where Lackland is or Hilldale or any of those. Mm -hmm. But on the next bus app, you can look through and go, okay, that's the one that's closest to me, and you can go there. Very good students since you were saying um, I was thinking uh, Tarrant County yes uh, pu public schools mm -hmm. uh, grammar schools high schools um, are there fares for students that yes if you're between the ages of five and 19 it's a one dollar fare each, each way mm -hmm. okay and what do you present your I your school ID or yeah if you have a school ID or a driver's license depending on your age okay and then with Tarrant County College, we have a partnership with them where Chancellor Giovannini is very much an advocate of public transportation. And he sees the challenges that students have getting all their classes in because you might have a class downtown, you might have another one at Northeast Campus. It's difficult if you don't have reliable transportation. And so we did a partnership with them where they agreed to pay for all of the students' rides on public transportation. Oh, that's great. And we provide service to all of their campuses. And so that way students are able to get where they need to go at no cost to them because the college is picking up the fee. And then the way we do it is it's unlimited rides for the students, 
And then when it gets to the point of the cost of a monthly pass, then we cut it off there. So the college is never paying more than a monthly pass per student. And the results on that have been fantastic. We're seeing between ten and 11,000 students a month using it. Correct. So how are you, how are you tracking? Uh, the students, if, they're, if a TCC student is listening and wants to do it, you mm -hmm. go to the Copy Center on campus, and they give you an ID that has an electronic code in it so okay. that literally when you, you tap our fare boxes, there's a ding, and we can use the unique identifier for that student and count how many rides that they've taken. And so when they exceed the number that would we equal the monthly pass, then we stop charging at that point. Okay. Yeah, that's re that's worth repeating. So if you're a, a Tarrant County College student, right, and you haven't heard yet, there's free transportation through your rail system. Student. Absolutely, you should thank Chancellor Giovannini. <laughs> He's worked diligently <laughs> with Trinity Metro to make that happen, and we provide service to all the campuses and students have unlimited rides and the college pays for it and it's great because students don't just use it for going to class they can use it for going to the grocery store to the movies to restaurants to work. medical appointments yeah to their jobs right that's great right. is that the um, uh, is that the only college right now participating in the program right now but we're talking to others and are certainly talking to anyone who is interested because it's a wonderful partnership and a great opportunity for the students absolutely and okay. for everybody, really, you know, the more education you have in the workforce, it's better for employers and it's just yeah. great all around. Great. Well, we'll be, we're going to be taking a break here in a minute. Uh, one more piece of data that, that you can give us as far as the, uh, the let's talk about the dash. Because, okay. because I think that um, sometimes there's hesitation with public transportation because of the emissions, the, the issues that come, but pu public transportation when used, like the dash is going to be used, mm -hmm. will make a huge impact. And especially, a lot of times, uh, low-income families are the ones that are more needing of any kind of public transportation. So this is a great, great idea. Do you think it, that it will be expanding in the future, the, the uh, battery electric bus? I would think so. That's definitely a trend in the industry, and this will be our first experience with that. But on the, the low admissions category, I will mention that our entire bus fleet is compressed natural gas. And so we do not have the fumes and the pollution that you sometimes associate with buses. Mm -hmm. It's very clean burning. Yeah, because a lot of us remember the old diesel oh, smell yeah. right. around the bus, right? Yeah, like and on the school buses, you smell that a lot. <laughs> on school yeah. buses, you yeah. still smell that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's great. So uh, let's take a quick break here, and uh, we'll be back and talk more about... Text rail. Sounds good. All right. Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Hey, 
Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Yeah. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. This is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. also provided by generous donations from listeners like you. You're listening to The Reba Show, Home Ownership, Hear It from the Experts, in the blue stream of the Fishbowl Radio Network. My name is Leticia Gallegos. I am co-hosting today with Salvador Villalobos, and our guest today is Laura Hanna. Laura is the Director of Communications for Trinity Metro. Welcome again, Laura. Thank you. And now, if you'd like to, uh, if you listeners would like to... Uh, uh, be a part of our conversation, please call us. Our phone number is area code 214-431-5062. Again, it's 214-431-5062. All right, so let me ask you, uh, Laura, families that are listening are interested in affordable housing. Are, are, I guess the question says, well, what does transportation have to do with home ownership? Well, I think it has a lot to do with home ownership because we're, we're uh, the theme of our show is always home ownership, but we are always looking for affordable housing and affordable home ownership. So tell me about the housing plans along the Texrail line. I know that, that you've mentioned that there is some. I'd be happy to. We've really had phenomenal success with the transit-oriented development along the Texrail route. Right now we have more than $336 million dollars in transit-oriented development, which is just phenomenal. That shows you how much people want to live near the rail and to help them get to where they need to go. In Fort Worth, under the category of affordable housing, there's a $94.3 million residential retail development going on. It's on property that we own, and then we are doing a long-term lease to Fort Worth Housing Solutions. And it's a 10-story, 236-unit property and some of that will be affordable housing, and it will also have the ground floor with the daycare, shops, and restaurants. So it's really convenient for people who live there. They could literally walk downstairs, drop off their kids at daycare, and then take the train to work. That's awesome. So what's the uh, the expected? Uh, has plans been made? Uh, what's the the expected date for that to start? I don't have all of the details on that. Um, mm -hmm. Primarily, we're involved in leasing the property, but I am not clear on the exact timeline from Fort Worth Housing Solutions. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. But we do have two other developments along the line that are under construction right now. 
in North Richland Hills, they actually have three different developments. They have two textile stations there, Iron Horse and Smithfield. And one of the properties they've developed is Smithfield Villas, which is a 90-lot townhome and patio homes. And then there are two mixed-use projects of commercial and 600 multifamily units. Plus, they have Iron Horse Commons, which is a 160-lot development of townhomes and patio homes, and all of that adds up to $137 million in residential and mixed-use, and that's 850 homes for people. Wow. That's great. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then in Grapevine, uh, they're building a rail station that's five-story, 400, sorry, 42,000 square feet with a great hall. They have the market hall with shops and retails, a 552-space garage, and some of those spaces will be allocated just for Texrail customers. And then the Marriott is building Hotel Vin, very appropriately named for Grapevine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 121-room boutique hotel, and so that's going to be great. And if you've been in Grapevine recently, you can see they're really moving along very well with that project. Oh. I'm sure that hotel will be full in no time. Oh, yeah, for sure. And stay full. Yes. <laughs> and and so that one, that one is a $105 million project. Wow. Okay. So what benefits do you see uh, when we talk about housing along the rail? Um, other than the obvious. Right. Other than the obvious. Uh, you feel that would be an attraction for more visitors or more... Um, like we need more people moving to this sure. area, but there's right. definitely, that continues to be the case, and we're proud of that. Well, I'd say one prime example of that is we know a realtor who lives at the TMP lofts, and before the train was even operational, he was promoting live there because Texrail will be here, because you can go downstairs, get on the train, go to the airport without really ever going outside other than on the platform. Mm -hmm. um, and the last four properties he sold in the lofts were to American Airlines employees. They want to live there, get on the train, go to work, not worry about driving, parking, just relax. Okay. And we've got a quiet car for that, so it makes it very convenient to just sit back, read, close your eyes, work on a laptop, whatever you want. Did you say a quiet car? Yes, um, I believe I mentioned that this is a, a Swiss-made train, and in Switzerland, the car that we use as a quiet car is the first class car there, but okay. we were going to break it up into classes, but we wanted to have one that was quiet where the lights are a little dimmer and it's just peaceful okay. for people who've been working hard all day and they just want to relax on the way home. Okay. So when we talk about the rail, now that you bring up the, the quiet room, mm -hmm. when we talk about the rail, we think about the, the, the trains that we hear coming down the tracks. Right. Tell us how different Tex Rail is compared to that. Sure, it's very quiet. Um, a lot of people don't even realize it's coming until it's much closer. We also have quiet zones along the majority of the rail. We've got 37 grade crossings, like where the the rail intersects with the street, and 34 of those are quiet zones, which means the horn won't blow. It'll just come through, the gates will come down, and every time there's a quiet zone, you have what we call quad gates. So. You think of traditional railroads, you've got one rail that comes down on either side. With a quad gate, you've got two gates on either side of the railroad track, which is a safety issue because there's always going to be somebody who tries to drive around. So we do the quad gates to keep people from crossing because just because you don't hear the train doesn't mean it's not coming. Right. And it can travel up to 70 miles an hour. So we want to keep mm -hmm. people safe. Sure. And then occasionally we, we do need to blow the horn like if... The engineer is moving along the track and there's a, a car stuck on it or a pedestrian or somebody jogging near the tracks, Any anything that could mm -hmm. be a safety concern, they'll go ahead and sound the horn because safety is the most important. Absolutely. I want to circle back uh, mm -hmm. regarding the uh, airline yeah. employees buying, a lo buying lofts. Mm -hmm. So is it because to offset the cost of... Well, of course, time, mm -hmm. but then also parking, um, you know, because I believe they may go for extended periods of time right. while they're working. Yeah, and so, they already live there, so they, you know, it's so easy for them to commute to work, and that's the hope with public transportation is that people commute to work, to school, to doctor's appointments, all the essential places they need to go. So are you seeing that more and more where people are buying in these lofts for the transportation 
uh, component or that's just an added plus? I think that's definitely a selling point. I had recently talked to a realtors group and um, we actually had a Fort Worth realtor who was giving the presentation and talking about every dollar invested in public mm -hmm. transit yields four dollars in return. And so it's, it's really a win-win that money goes into public transportation and it benefits everyone. It's there for everyone. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell us more. I know you have a wealth of information. Of uh, course. <laughs> a wealth of information there. So, so tell us a little bit more. Sure, I'll mm -hmm. tell you some okay. fun facts about the train because it is very different. As I said, it's uh, Swiss made. It was, it's manufactured by Stadler and the outside of the bodies were built in Hungary mm -hmm. and then they were shipped to Salt Lake City and more than 70% of the train is domestic content as part of the Buy America program. So oh, that's great. most of the work was actually done here and it's just fascinating to see all the parts that go into it. I mean, it's miles of wires and technology that go into each one of them and it's a, a bi-directional train okay. and so it looks the same from the front and from the back and so... <sighs> That kind of confuses some people. Seeing <laughs> if it's coming or going. Are going. <laughs> so it's important when you're waiting for the train to look at the, the head sign above the right. window on the front of it to see if it says airport or if it says Fort Worth so you know which way it's right. going. Now, okay. Wi-Fi, since there's all these new amenities, Not is there Wi-Fi? No. But we're thinking about adding that. Um, we found that a lot of people already have unlimited data plans okay. or hotspots. And so... We were sticking with the, the technology we had in place, and we may add that later. Okay, great. One of the things that's uh, really nice is that it has level boarding, so that means you do not need to go up to any steps. Yeah. There's just, you know, maybe like an inch or two between the train and the platform. And so if you have a wheelchair, you're pushing a stroller, if you have rolling luggage because you're going to the airport, right. if you're rolling that bike on, it's just smooth as can be. Just roll right on. So is there a section for strollers or do they have to fold the strollers i mean there are some places where we have fold down seats you know there's a section where they're against the wall and sure. you fold them down mm -hmm. so you could theoretically put the stroller next to you okay. in one of those um the bikes go on vertical bike racks and um some other things that we have i mean the whole thing is ada accessible so it has a, a really nice restroom in there <coughs> excuse me um, level boarding, just smooth, smooth, very quiet. One of the things people often associate with trains are kind of the clickety-clack sound of the train. And our rail was delivered in one-quarter mile segments, and then it was welded together. So you have continuously welded steel for 27 miles. That's oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so they're all, do they also have outlets? Because that's something important to me when I travel on a rail. An outlet, to, you know, usually my phone is not charged or right, fully exactly. charged. Or do you have the outlets there as well? We have USB charging okay. ports at every seat, and okay. so you can charge your phone or your mobile device en route. All right. And every seat has a either a seat back tray, like you would see on the airplane, right? Or there are some tables with four seats around it. So if you're traveling with friends and you just want to talk, you want to play cards, play dominoes, <laughs> right, whatever. Right. You've got a table set up there. Oh, that's great. I mean, I took the rail up. You just took over in 2000, this year, January 2010. I yes. did take the rail myself uh, about a year ago mm -hmm. from the airport down to uh, downtown Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. Very enjoyable ride. It oh, really good. is. And uh did save some time, met some interesting people. Mm -hmm. I did see the playing poker or right. playing cards on the... Or even kids drawing. It was it was a nice mm -hmm. experience, and it was very inexpensive. Yeah, when I've been on Texrail, you often see grandparents and grandkids who are out there, you know, just out for the ride, just right. to have fun. And people most frequently say, "I can't believe how smooth it is, or how quiet it is." That's great. And it is very economical. Two fifty each way, or five dollars for a day pass. You can't, can't beat go that. Wrong, no. How about, uh, like you said, grandparents and parents with their children? What's the age that um, children's pay, children pay fares? Or yeah, the if, parents pay their fares right. for their children? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're um, under five years, it's free. Okay. And then if you're five to 19, it's a dollar. And then we also have the same discount for senior citizens. Okay. Is that uh, seven days a week or is it during the week? Every day. Every day. 
Great. We run 365 a year. Good and I've had that question quite a bit where people thought maybe we wouldn't run on Sundays because Trinity Railway Express only runs Monday through Saturday, but TextRail runs every day. Great. Awesome. Okay, so if you're listening and you want to join the conversation or have a question for Laura, please call us at 214-431-5062, and she'll have an answer for you for sure. <laughs> so doesn't, don't hesitate. So, uh, again, uh, tell us about tell us about the alliance project i mean the you mentioned the alliance corridor mm -hmm. can you that's worth repeating go, go ahead and give us some more information about about sure. that mm -hmm. i would say that really started in 2016 when we started our route 64 that goes from fort worth to alliance to denton and so people can connect to jobs in alliance or they can connect all the way to denton and go to classes at unt so that's a partnership we have with the denton county Transportation Authority, or DCTA, mm -hmm. um, where people connect all the way up and go to classes. So you have a lot of people who work in Alliance and travel from Denton or Fort Worth, mm -hmm. and then they get off at the bus there. And then when they get off, the challenge has been getting them to their jobs because it might still be a half mile. And if you don't bring your bike or you don't want to walk that far, first mile, last mile can be a challenge. So what we did is we took over from a pilot program that had just ended and we started the Alliance zip zone. And so that will take you basically on the cost of your pass that you're going into Alliance with, it will cover your cost on the zip zone as well. And so you just arrange for your ride. It's an on-demand service when you get off the bus and then that will take you to your work. Okay. So tell us about the apps again, because I think, um, I think those are great tools to use. Mm -hmm. So tell us the names of the apps again okay. that you mentioned. There's the GoPass app, and that's where you can purchase tickets. And then there's the next bus app that gives you real-time bus information. You can also go to our website, which is ridetrinitymetro.org, because that's what we want you to do, is ride Trinity Metro. Mm -hmm. And you can go to the trip planner there. And you can put in your starting destination and your ending destination, and that will map out the best route for you. And we also have fabulous customer care people. If you're not technology savvy or you just have some issues or extra questions with it, we have our customer care department open every day. So you can call them at 817-215-8600. And trust me, they can answer anything. It's amazing what they come up with. When we were out at Main Street Arts Festival, there was someone who was curious about, okay, I live here and I want to take text rail, but then I need to get to jury duty. And we had somebody there from customer care, and she just rattled off the frequencies and the routes That's and the best way to get there. They're amazing people. That's wonderful. Uh, well, it's an amazing organization. It's an amazing agency. Uh, I understand that you're also a 501c3 um, nonprofit organization, right. as, as Reba is. So uh, I'm going to introduce you again. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Laura Hanna. <laughs> lost my glasses. Uh, <laughs> Laura Hanna is director of communications for Trinity Metro, and uh, hosting today is Salvador Ga uh, Salvador Villalobos, and I am Leticia Gallegos, co-hosting today. So uh, here at the Reba Show, we inform and we serve. That that is our mission here. We bring information about home ownership whether you're preparing to purchase or sustaining the home that you're in, and also information that will help you become more financially savvy. And so um, using public transportation and, and using the benefit of the low cost is, is definitely a good thing. Our hope is that you, our audience, will engage with us here at The Reba Show and become a loyal fan of this The Reba Show. So tell us, Laura, what does home ownership mean to you personally? It's having the place you want to go home to at night and be with your family and nurture and support each other. Right. And everyone deserves that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so again, uh, Laura Hanna is our uh, guest today. Thank you for sharing time with us today. Laura, we really appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, so we have some um, announcements to make. Um, in, on August 10th, uh, 2019, we're going to have, or Arlington, the city of Arlington is having a homeownership fair. So 
it's kind of early in the year to be promoting it, but we want to do it start early because we want the attendance to be really great at the Arlington Homeownership Fair on August 10th. So as we go along these next couple of months, we'll have uh, more information and more guests talking about that. So we are the Hispanic Real Estate Brokers Association, a registered 501c3 nonprofit corporation. We've been streaming live on Facebook, and um, you can see the replay of the video on the Reba Show Facebook as well as the Reba Connect Facebook page, and also on our YouTube channel where you can subscribe to see future, uh, future videos as well. So please follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Reba Show. This episode is available as, as a podcast also on the Reba Show page at fishbowlradionetwork.us or fbrn.us. You can also find it on any podcast app. You can learn about topics that we have planned for upcoming shows on our website, which is rebaconnect.org. That's H-R-E-B-A connect dot O-R-G and clicking on the Reba show. If, uh, if you've learned something or you want to support this programming, uh, we'd love to have a donation from you. Um, you can go to our website. This will help this programming and other community outreach efforts. Visit rebaconnect.org and click on the donate button of the homepage. And, um, if you have any specific questions or comments, you may email us at rebashow at rebaconnect.org. Any closing comments, something that you can remember, uh, Laura, that we can benefit from? Sure. Well, you had mentioned affordability, and there's an organization called the American Public Transportation Association, and they track expenses across the country. And their statistics show that if you do not own a car and you choose public transportation, that's an average savings of $9,400 a year. Wow. We all spend without thinking about it. You know, when you're filling up on gas, yeah. you're paying your insurance every month, maintenance, fuel, wear and tear. Yes. All the expenses you have with a vehicle. I mean, that's close to $10,000 savings, which someone could be putting that money into their home. Exactly. And, and sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Right. And that's why we have you here to share this wealth of information because... In reality, um, when we don't have public transportation, mm -hmm. like other major cities do, we tend to not think about it. And right. we, we worry about buying a car, maintaining a car, and that's just what we do. But when we bring to our listeners information like this, it gives them options. Mm -hmm. Just like it, it gives them options when it comes to purchasing a home. So um, this is great, great information. I do have a question okay. about saving, savings sure. for the average person. Mm -hmm. uh, employers, are certain employers uh, helping defer the cost of um, public transportation? Absolutely. We've got what's called the Easy Ride Commuter Program, and we work with area businesses, and they can sign up at no cost, and then that provides their employees a 25% discount on fares. So if you have a monthly fare that's a local fare, that includes all Trinity Metro buses, all of TexRail, and the Trinity Railway Express to Centerport, ordinarily that's $80 a month, which is pretty cheap. But if you're an Easy Ride participant, it's $60. That's great. And that's hard to be more affordable than $2 a day. Mm -hmm. And that's unlimited rides. So where does the employee tell his employer or her employer to, to sign up? Do they go online? Do they call somebody? How yeah, is usually we work with the HR representative, and so when employ employees are interested, they, they go and talk to them, and we're happy to talk to any company. It doesn't have to be a particular size because everybody has different okay. needs. Great, great. So where would they contact? Where would the HR uh, representative contact, or who would they contact? They could just call our main number <clears throat> at 817-215. Excuse me. 817-215-8700 and ask for the Easy Ride representative, or you can send an email to easyride at ridetm.org. Okay. But that's been a great benefit for many companies, and we actually talked to the Ben E. Keith company this morning. They're one of our newest participants. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks again, Laura, for being here. Um, my name is Leticia Gallegos. And thank you all for listening. Have a great afternoon.